Hey everybody, welcome to the BibleCast Christian Video Podcast. I'm Jim Guy, your host, and I want to remind everyone to please take a look at our charities page on our website at www.thebiblecast.org to help us help others in need. Without further delay, please enjoy this week's episode of the BibleCast. Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the Bible Cast. How exciting. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is finally upon us. And if you're anything like me, you're getting totally amped up to go celebrate it with your family and your loved ones. This week, we are on our last stop of the Advent series as we discuss the topic of joy. Not just any joy, but the joy that is only possible because of that little child wrapped in swaddling clothes. I'm talking about Christmas joy. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this Christmas is going to be tough on a lot of people. So many of us are out of work and not a lot of options right now. Many of us sick or have sick relatives in the hospital. And honestly, there are a lot of people who have suffered their greatest losses this year, COVID-19 or not. And they're going into this Christmas without the loved ones they cherish the most. That's a hard place to be and a difficult spot to be joyful about anything. Today, we're going to look closer at the greatest gift the world has ever known, and together, maybe we can find our way to Christmas joy after all. So stick with me as we get into it on this week's episode of the BibleCast. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Everyone knows the song lyrics and everyone has sung it at one point or another. Joy to the world. A woman who has children can be asked what the most joyous moment in her life was and hands down the answer will be the joy of the birth of a firstborn child. There is no greater gift to women under salvation. Mary knew this well when the angel Gabriel told her that She would bear a son, and he would be called the Son of God. She was overjoyed and said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. She embraced the gift with honor. Gabriel also told Mary that her family member, Elizabeth, who was barren, was six months pregnant now as a gift from the Lord. And Mary rushed 65 miles to see her because she was so excited. When Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, the scripture tells us that her baby leaped for joy in the womb and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of Christmas joy we're talking about today. And you can't find that anywhere but in the presence of the Lord. Good tidings of great joy. Luke 2, 8 through 11 tells a story. Now there were in the same country shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. I know this is the same verse I talked about earlier in the Advent series, but I want to point something out here that I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to expound on today. In the first sentence here, we see a vivid picture of the shepherds, don't we? It was nighttime in the middle of winter, which contrary to popular belief is cold in the desert, especially at night. And these guys are living in the fields with their sheep. Ugh, gross. Not exactly top accommodations in the middle of a field. I'm talking... 
you know, dirty, wet, stinky mud huts with bugs and dirty wool. Just gross. <laughs> I'm sure the conversation out there wasn't how great things were going for them in life right then. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they felt like life couldn't get any lower. Alone, depressed, and miserable. I'm sure they felt no one could possibly understand the amount of suffering they were going through on a daily basis. So why? Why would the angel of the Lord appear to these guys out of everyone else? Well, this is what I believe I was uh, supposed to talk about today, and it was revealed to me. It's because when we are at our lowest point and we feel no hope, when we feel alone or depressed and no one understands what we're going through, we can still find joy because we have a Savior who is Christ the Lord and He gave us a promise, a promise that this temporary life isn't the end for us, but it's just the beginning. 1 Thessalonians 4 talks about the last day and after our loved ones who have fallen asleep in Christ. Verse 417 says, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. You see, because God delivered that child to us on Christmas Day, it started a chain of events that solidified the promise that we have a life together with our loved ones in Him that are waiting on the other side. Our lives don't stop with the headstone, but that's where it starts, and we need to hold on to that. For those shepherds, their joy was that a Savior was born, and that is the joy of Christmas wrapped up and laid in a manger, and that is the Christmas joy we need to grab a hold of and never let go. It's funny, I make about a five-hour drive to see my family every Christmas, and as I'm driving, I like to listen to Christmas songs and sing and act goofy. The thing is, I'm usually traveling by myself, so people pull up to me and I'm all, <laughs> I know I'm a goof, but I'm joyous. I go all year sometimes and not see my family. So that joy builds up the closer I get. I know that just around the corner, I'm going to see them again and we're going to laugh and tell stories and just enjoy each other's company again. There's no being upset. We live so far apart because I only look forward to the day that, you know, I get to see them again. That hope and understanding makes the temporary time exactly that temporary. Speaking of joy, I was thinking of church service the other day, and have you ever seen those people in church when the music is playing and the church is singing praise and worship, and they just stand there like a bump on a log without ever moving? I don't know. You might be one of those people. I don't know. Well, the thing is, they got no Jesus joy, and that's why they're quiet. You got to be joyous in life. The church should be full of joy. We should be having so much fun in there that the world looking through the window sees something they want to be a part of. Don't you agree? I mean, I want to sing and shout to my Lord. I'm grateful, man. I think the church should be a place full of joy and happiness, don't you? I think we should be like Mary and get filled with the Holy Spirit because we're, we're so joyous. Or uh, Elizabeth, rather. I think we should explode in joyous song because we have a future, a future together with Jesus. Amen. Psalms 98, 1 through 4 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness. He has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice, and sing praises. Because Jesus was born to us, his salvation is eternal. And that's a hope I can stand behind and be joyous about. Is life crap sometimes? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we have a promise and a future we can hold on to. And that future carries us past the trials of the day. A future that carries us into a tomorrow and a joy we can hold on to until we're together with our loved ones celebrating Christ forever. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. It's hard to celebrate the greatest gift of mankind or to mankind, which is our salvation, without recognizing where it all began. As we gather 
to celebrate Christmas with our families and loved ones, let's hold on to the miracle that opened the door for us to draw close to God and remember His love for us as we look forward to our future. God bless everyone. This week, my prayer for you is that God provide you with peace of mind and strength to make it through Walmart as you're doing your last minute shopping. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Be safe and enjoy the holiday. May God bless us all. Have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful rest of the week.